when I was expecting Emily and at one, one point when I had headaches and swollen glands here and in the back of my neck and we had no idea and he said that they thought it was glandular fever and after she was born that's when we learned that that was the outward sign of toxoplasmosis, the only symptoms that I had, but to her it was devastating inside. So that was interesting to learn. Okay, as for Emily, I'll go through and tell you a few of the things that are characteristics about her. And I'm sure that some of it is just her personality coming through. But these are the things that we have experienced that are different because of her special needs. Uh, with her, because she's not able to communicate really well, we, when we a want to know something, we'll ask her a question and we'll say, do you want this or this? Instead of yes, no questions, because quite often she'll say no, no, no. So we use that. Uh, she needs time to process things. When you tell her something that's going to happen, you can't expect her to do it right away, because she just needs to process it. Uh, when Emily gets frustrated, she will bite her hand and hit her head. So this uh, oft times handicapped children will have different ways of, of hurting themselves and we have to, to deal with that, but it is a common thing with her. She is very in tune with music and she loves, she loves it. She'll, she has her own kind of dancing that she does all the time, swinging back and forth. Whenever we have a um, sing in church, she always anticipates the end of a hymn. And people can tell, she knows when it's going to stop. She also, when she was small, she was terrified of water. That was uh, difficult, baths and so forth. And we had a friend who worked at the uh, YMCA. She taught swimming lessons and she offered to take Emily and teach her to swim. I think Emily was very small then. So because of this dear friend, Emily can swim in any depth of water now and is perfectly safe. She has her own way of swimming. She's like floating and she doggy paddles and but it's awesome. She can do it. <laughs> She loves to eat and she feeds herself, but we have to be careful to cut everything up so that she doesn't choke, because we have had some episodes of that. So uh, we have to be there when she eats. We don't leave her alone to eat. And we need to remind her to take small bites. So, but that works. She loves to listen to talking books and music. We do that a lot. She loves to have her head, back, or feet rubbed, especially at church or when we're sitting reading or something. She will usually grab my hand and ask me to do that. Emily has never been able to suck. So in the beginning, we fed her from a dropper for quite a while until she could take solid food. And now, if she needs a drink of water, we give her a cup of water. She never can drink from a drinking fountain. She just wets her mouth that way. She's very neat and always cleans up after herself. She likes to have everything put away. And at uh, mealtime when we eat, or if we have guests, she'll often come by and pick up our dirty dishes and take them to the sink without us even saying a word. She's just very helpful, and that's all part of her herself. She, op uh, if doors are left open or drawers or cupboard doors, she will go shut them behind us, whether or not we're using them. Same with the dishwasher, and sometimes we have to ask her to leave them open on purpose if we're using them. And if I need a chair to get up in the cupboard, to get something out of the cupboard, and I go put it, that thing down, if I turn around, she will already be putting the chair back unless I ask her to leave it out for me. So she's very uh, diligent in putting things in their places where they should be. She needs help with personal needs, clasps and buttons, but otherwise she gets herself dressed, 
She picks out all of her clothes the night before and sets them out for the next day and she actually does very well with combining colors even though with her eyesight you'd think that she wouldn't be able to tell. But she does it. Everything's color coordinated usually 100% of the time. She's very loving and wants to have hugs often during the day. She has always slept well. She's an excellent sleeper. She shadows me and helps wherever she can, helping to carry baskets of laundry downstairs, or perhaps if I'm baking, she'll help stir. So that's about all I can think of, particularly to Emily, but she has definitely made a big difference in our family. And I'm sure we've learned a lot from her. So Emily's communicating. She knows some signs and she knows some words. But as Sterling said, she is, uh, she's not real clear in her talking sometimes. And she's not, her signs are often her, her own adapted from the signs that are regularly taught. So it helps to have, well, I, because I'm around her mostly, I do know those, but anyone who is observant and watchful will recognize them after a while. When Emily was younger and going to school, they were helping her to do um, many things, like button buttons and a set a table do a dish, uh, clean out a dishwasher, and we, and she did those things for a while. She has since developed uh, part of the handicap is drooling, and it's constant. So things like cleaning out a dishwasher have been eliminated from what she does, or setting a table, or some of those things, because it isn't appropriate. Uh, but she helps in any way that she can or that I can think of to have her help. I know that I have a friend who has a handicapped daughter who is autistic and her abilities have been amazing. Her, the mother has been able to help her go a long way and spend a lot of time with her. I, th I am not sure, but I think it depends on the time that a mother or a father has to be able to spend with the child on what can be accomplished. So it's, it's an individual thing and the parents have to consider their family situation and what's best for the child and do the best they can and that hopes that it's the best. <laughs>